So what was the first game that you played? Or when did you start to become interested in games? I, I, I think it was, for me, it was uh, Super Mario Brothers was the first thing that kind of inspired me. And I, I played it on the NES. Uh, and uh, I remember thinking, like, I was, I think I was six at the time. I remember thinking that I want to make my own games based on. So I wanted to make Mario clones. Things. I asked my father about how, how these are done, and he said that they are programmed, and there's programming languages, and he pointed me towards Quick Basic and uh, gave me a quick lesson in Quick Basic. Didn't actually get anything done for a while, but then I got into doing like uh, text adventures. Uh, okay. So I made some, made some really bad text adventures. The, the first one I had had like a box, so you could press enter to like finish the whole game instead of typing anything in. Which I found like re immediately after the release of the game. So then I learned the importance of playtesting at an early stage. I didn't think I would ever end up making games uh, for a living. I just seemed very like very far away from my text adventures to actually like making an actual game. I'm still confused by the fact that I can survive by making games. Yeah. So I think maybe after your talk, so first do some hi more history, so you can okay. talk about your work. And then I think it might be interesting after your talk, because I also know that some people in the room, they have questions for you that also concern your future. Sweet. So. Usually, in my opinion, like lectures are very, usually very one directional, so they're not very uh, game-like. So I decided that I'm going to make my lecture a bit more game-like, and I decided to make it as a game. Uh, the, way, the way we're going to play this game is uh, I have here uh, <laughs> a pair of socks from a uh, famous indie game designer who is present here at the room. <laughs> and uh, the way this is going to work, I'm going to throw this in the audience. So if you have like coffee cups, please cover them up so no accidents are going to happen. And whoever catches this will have to make decisions uh, based on our lecture. So I'm going to start off by drawing this somewhere and hopefully breaking something on the way. So yeah, my name is uh, Petru Purho, uh, and I'm an independent game developer. And I run a company called uh, Clooney Games. And uh, <laughs> so yeah, I, I made a game called uh, Crayon Physics Deluxe. And because of, of the fact that I, I really appreciate you guys coming over here and coming to my talk, and I don't actually know if there's going to be any value in this talk for you guys. So I decided that I'm going to give you, each of you, a free copy of Crayon Physics Deluxe as a gift from me to you guys for being Ooh. here. <laughs> In, in, in order to get this free copy of your uh, of the game, you have to go to this uh, special website that I have here and uh, download the game. <laughs> you can download the game from there. Uh, so, so this is going to be choose your own lecture. This is in the style of a choose your own adventure, but uh, in, in a lecture form. So we get to make our first first selection. It's uh, so you have you have the. You have the power here. So, do you, you want to? Uh, do you want me to explain how I got into games, or we can skip di directly to the games? It's up to you. Uh, I'd like to hear your story. You'd like to hear my story. Okay. So, one it is. So, okay. Uh, it's back in 2006. I I was. Uh, uh, I heard about this thing called the Experimental Gameplay Project, which is a project run by these four guys, uh, who. Some of you might recognize Kyle Gay Gabler is the guy who made World of Goo. And uh, Kyle Gray ended up making Henry Hasford's Postling Adventure. Uh, these four guys had this idea that they would make a new game every week. They were at Carnegie Mellon University, and they took like a half a semester off and ended up making like 50 games altogether. Uh, and they published their uh, ideas in an article in Ga at Gama Sutra called How to Prototype a Game in Seven Days. And I read that article, and I was, that, that was amazing. Like, it's, it's a really good article. Highly recommend reading it. So they, then I decided that, okay, I'm going to give it a try. And I started a blog called Clooney Games. And the idea of Clooney Games was that every month I would create a new game that was made in under seven days. And that's how I ended up making a huge amount of different types of games. 
So uh, you can show it to someone else now or give it up. Do you want to see uh, Jesus versus dinosaurs or skip to by prototypes? Yeah, I'd like to see Jesus versus dinosaurs. Jesus versus dinosaurs it is. Uh, Jesus versus dinosaurs is a bit diff difficult to demonstrate because it actually is a two-player game which requires 360 controllers, uh, which I don't have. You got one? Do we actually have? This is going to be interesting. Is it wireless? Have you played it before? Yeah. 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 Well, we'll do it. Uh, you probably. Wait, no, it's here. Uh, so, the, so the story of this game is that God travels back in time to kill all the dinosaurs because they're not in the Bible. And then Darwin hears about it and he travels back in time to stop God. And then they build cars out of, uh, God builds cars out of Jesus parts and Darwin builds cars out of, uh, out of uh, dinosaur parts. Actually, it's this way. I know. You were correct. I know. Should we change <laughs> our place? So apparently I'm play, ma, playing God because I look like Jesus to him. So press A and we'll get the game started. So we're rotating, rotating these parts and the goal is to get the car across to the other side of the screen and then you'll get a point. And whoever gets five points first will win this game. Jesus versus dinosaurs. Uh, so you get to make, we're skipping one slide, but you get to make the selection. Should I show Crayon versus Deluxe or skip to the prototypes? I want to see the game. You want to see Crayon versus Deluxe or other games? No, other games. No, no, the... So other games it is. So the idea in this game is of obviously you, uh, you draw things and uh, physics takes, takes take over your drawings. And the idea is to get the red ball to the star. You can do this the easy way, which is just to like draw a line here. Or then you can do this a uh, bit more complicated and in insane way. <laughs> I haven't played this game in a while, so excuse me if I suck in this. I don't know if this thing is going to work at all, but I'm going to give it a try. It's bigger boulders. Actually, get to the part where we have the, this. This is part of like uh, this is uh, a number of prototypes I've made, and uh, we, whichever number you select, there's a game behind it. And then I'm gonna show that game, and then maybe talk about that game a bit. Sixteen. So Pluto Strikes Back. Uh, Pluto Strikes Back is, is, I think this was like the third game I made in this. So this is made back in, I think, 2006 or 2007. Uh, the idea of this game is that uh, the, 
people of Pluto are based at their dwarf planet now, so they've brought out this huge, huge, giant baseball bat, and they're taking their revenge on the solar system by hitting asteroids to the other planets. This was a game made in like 70 days or something. Uh, and uh, it's a bit weird game for me because uh, uh, I got the idea for uh, in, in a dream. The idea was actually that Earth is defending itself from, from, uh, from asteroids, like uh, in a Starship Troopers kind of a way where like aliens are firing asteroids at, uh, at Earth and they have baseball bat to defend it. Uh, and I made this kind of small prototype out of it, like very physics based. And uh, I noticed that it actually was pretty fun to play around with. But the problem was with Earth is kind of located in this kind of bad position in the solar system. So I decided to do it with Pluto instead. And then Pluto being a dwarf planet kind of fit into the fiction nicely. Uh, the thing I noticed about this game was, was uh, adding the springs to the planets. Like that that in improved the whole game like hundredfold and it made it feel like you're actually doing like if you remove the sound effects and if you remove the springs the things would just like clink and it would be kind of boring but that small addition of doing that actually made the whole thing like it was really fun to just fling around i didn't know what the gameplay would be because I, I was just like flinging around and then i made it so that you get points for hitting 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 uh things in weird ways like getting com combos and i added some Oh, bonus points. Uh, so, uh, just got the sock. Thirteen. Thirteen. <laughs> uh, Jimmy's lost his toilet paper. So, so the, uh, this is a puzzle game. And the idea is that you have to collect all the toilet paper and then you get to go to the exit in the level so you can go like this in this level. And once you've collected all, you can get to the exit. Uh, I got this idea while I was taking a crap. <laughs> and, uh, and it actually worked. Like, I'm, I'm surprised how well the game, gameplay turned out to be out of this. So some objects that the player can't walk through, but the toilet paper can go through, which you have. Like, here's an elevator. So if I press the button, it, it will come down. So I have to push this box here. Yeah, this was seven days. Do you, do you also fail sometimes? Do you make a game in seven days? Yeah. I do. This is actually a pretty, uh, pretty decent game, in my opinion, of, of games that I've made. Uh, it's got some interesting ideas. Uh, and the gameplay actually kind of works. The platforming physics are suck ass because it's a physics engine platforming stuff. So if you're ever making a platforming game, ever, don't ever use a physics engine. Here's some tips for you if you're... If you're game development tips from, from people who've done it. There are uh, 